Woman dying from COVID confessed something really heart-wrenching to me. She told me that when she was a teenager, she told her mother that one of the local black boys had touched her behind the grocery store. And in 1936, Louisiana, this was a very big deal. Not only was this boy lynched, but he was beaten and his genitals were cut off. And then the family home was burned to the ground and she watched it all happen. You want to know why? Because she saw that his sisters had prettier dresses than she did. And she just didn't like it. So she lied. And then it clicked. This same woman had been hallucinating for the past couple of days, saying that there was a black boy in her room watching her. Would not stop staring at her. And she was scared shitless. She asked if she could be forgiven. I told her the only person who could forgive her was the boy she killed. woman dying from... <clears throat> Shalom, shalom, shalom. Definitely a quick lesson. And first and foremost, as always, before I get started, we give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. And next, double honors to the head apostles slash elder bishops of Great Millstone who teach and who rule well. Peace, blessings, and safety to all you sincere Akim. Keep pushing, keep believing, and keep the faith, regardless of whether you were here or forbear. All right, so. <clears throat> you seen you seen a little video, all right. You seen a little video, and this is uh just another incident in the dark history of the United States of America. All the you know we always go into all the evil and bloodshed. This place and the people who run it, Esau Edom, has perpetuated. All right, and in the end of the video, they said uh, the woman asked uh, if if the Most High could or if she could be forgiven. Right. Well, I mean, we're going we're gonna to go to the scriptures <clears throat> and get an answer to that question. All right. So we'll go ahead and jump right into it. We'll go to the book of Hebrews. We're going to see we're going to see what the, what the Lord got to say about repentance for Esau Edom. All right. Go to the book of Hebrews. I think that's where it is. Here it is. Yep, Hebrews chapter 12. At verse, <clears throat> verse 16, it says, Lest there be any fornicator or profane person is Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For ye know how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected. For he found no place of repentance. Though he sought it carefully with tears, all right. So there's not, there's not, um, <clears throat> there's not uh, any repentance for Esau, Edom, nor his descendants. So could she be forgiven? The answer is no. That's that's the answer according to the Bible. That woman is not going to be forgiven. All right. There's no repentance for Esau, Edom, and their wickedness. We go. We're gonna see what the Lord got to say, though. All right. We're gonna see what the Lord got to say. Let's go to Malachi chapter 1. All right. It says, <clears throat> Malachi chapter 1 and verse 3. And I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. And what's this speaking of? This is speaking of the, what they call the dark ages. When the Roman Empire, the Western Roman Empire had fallen, all right, and they were pretty much pushed out of the world for a thousand years. All right. It says, They shall build, but I will throw down, and they shall call them the border of wickedness, and the people against whom the Lord hath indignation forever. All right. So once again, there's no repentance for Esau Edom, all right, nor their descendants. There's no repentance for the sons of the wicked. All right, their fate is already sealed. All right, they are the vessels of wrath fitted for destruction. All right, we're going to go. Let's go to the book of uh, Isaiah chapter 14, somewhere around about the 20th verse. All right, we're going to see what the Lord prophesies of for them. So Isaiah chapter 14. <clears throat> and uh, I'm going to read this first. It says, verse 5, this, The Lord hath broken the staff of the wicked, and the scepter of the rulers. All right, Esau Edom is the wicked according to the Bible. 
all right, the so-called white race, all right, so-called because no one is actually white. They're really red, all right, but biblically they're known as the descendants of Esau, Edom. It says, he who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, all right, and that's all they've been doing. They've been, been, been beating on the children of Israel for hundreds of years now. He that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindereth, all right? So like you like like we just watched that video. Okay? They that kind of stuff would happen on a regular basis. It was that wasn't a isolated incident. Okay? They they were beaten, killing, murdering, raping, all right, for hundreds and hundreds of years. Okay? And even in in also back in the time of Alexander the Great, going all the way back to the Greeks and the Romans, they're doing the same thing. All right? So, you know, this is he that ruled the nations in anger. It says he's going to be persecuted and none hindereth, meaning nobody's going to, nobody's going to show any pity, any mercy, or right? nobody's going to, nobody's going to say this ain't right, you know. And any any you have a lot of jakes that that uh that are trying going to step up to try to save Esau. It says they're going to be slaughtered with the sword as well. It says uh let's just skip on down. All right, it says. <clears throat> Verse 21, prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise, nor possess the land, nor fill the face of the world with cities. For I will rise up against them, saith the Lord of hosts, and cut off from Babylon the name, and the remnant, and son, and nephew. All right, so the Lord is... That's, that's exactly what he says he's gonna do. He's gonna cut them, cut off and uh from Babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew. So there's not gonna be any more, it's not gonna be any more Edomites. All right, that's that is that is their end. That's what the Lord, that's what the Lord declared for them. And get that let's get that in the book of Obadiah. All right, this is uh Obadiah verse. Let's see, there's no there's no chapters, there's only one, only one chapter in the book. Obadiah. Verse, um, verse eight, it says, shall I not in that day, saith the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Edom and understanding out of the Mount of Esau and thy mighty men, O Taman, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. All right. So that's, that's the uh, same sentiment. All right. That's what the Lord has prepared for them. That's what he wants to do. Verse 10, for thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. So this is the reason why he's doing it, all right? Because Esau Edom has touched the apple of the Lord's eye. Let's go there in Zechariah, I believe it's Zechariah chapter 2. All right, so they got to be punished for that. All right, Zechariah chapter 2, and let's see. So like, oh, here it is. Zechariah chapter 2 and verse 8. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, after the glory hath he sent me unto the nations which spoiled you. Okay, mostly Esau, Edom. For he that toucheth you toucheth the apple of his eye. For behold, I will shake mine hand upon them, and they shall be a spoil to their servants. And you shall know that the Lord of hosts hath sent me. All right, so that's exactly what's going to happen. They're going to be a spoil to their servants. And we are their servants. Ezekiel chapter 25. Let's go there. All right. Ezekiel chapter 25. And verse, uh, <clears throat> verse 12, it says, Thus saith the Lord, Yahabash and Yahushai, because that Edom hath dealt against the house of Judah by taking vengeance and hath greatly offended and revenged himself upon them. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Yahabash and Yahushai, I will also stretch out mine hand upon Edom and will cut off man and beast from it. And I will make it desolate from Taman and they of the Dan shall fall by the sword. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people, Israel, and they shall they shall do in Edom according to mine anger and according to my fury. And they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord. All right, so 
we're going to pretty much tear them to shreds. All right, that's, that's pretty much what the scripture says. That's why I said prepare slaughter uh, for their children because of the iniquity of their fathers. All right, so we're going to tear them to pieces. Uh, let's get some more. Let's go to Zechariah chapter 9. And they can't escape it. All right, there's no escaping this. The Lord said he's going to lay vengeance upon them by the hand of his people. And they shall do according to his anger and his fury. All right, Zechariah chapter 9. And verse, um, let's see. Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 13. It says, When I have bent Judah for me, filled the bowl with Ephraim. Okay, so he's bent Judah and filled the bowl with Ephraim. You, meaning he's using him as his weapons of war. So both southern and northern kingdom. And raised up thy sons, O Zion, against thy sons, O Greece. All right, so Esau, Edom are the sons of Greece, okay, and, and not the actual Greeks, because that was actually the land of um, of Japheth, I believe. But uh, they took over that land, so this prophecy is fulfilled in them. It says, And raise up thy sons, O Zion, against thy sons, O Greece, and made thee as, a, as the sword of a mighty man. It says, and, a, and, the Lord, and the Lord shall be seen over them, and his arrow shall go forth as the lightning. And the Lord God shall blow the trumpet and shall go from whirlwinds of the south. The Lord of hosts shall defend them and they shall devour and subdue with sling stones. And they shall drink and make a noise as through wine. And they shall be filled with bowls and as the corners of the altar. All right, so I'm going to do utter destruction upon Esau and Edom. All right, this, you know, once again, sons of Zion against the sons of Greece. All right, let's let's uh, let's go to uh, Zechariah chapter ten, the next chapter, and it says, <clears throat> um, Zechariah chapter uh, uh, ten and verse three, it says, "Mine anger was kindled against the shepherds, and I punished the goats, for the Lord of hosts hath visited his flock, the house of Judah, and hath made them as his goodly horse in the battle." All right, so he's, he's going to give spiritual strength, spiritual power, all right, to the, to the uh, children of Israel to bring destruction upon Esau, Edom. It says, verse 4, out of him came forth the corner, out of him the nail, out of him the battle bow, out of him every oppressor together. And they shall be as mighty men which tread down their enemies in the mire of the streets in the battle. They shall fight because the Lord is with them. And the riders on horses shall be confounded. All right. If you think about the um, the red horse, all right, the the red horse that was given the power of the sword. That's talking about Esau Edom. All right. They're they're going to be confounded. The Lord is going to use the uh, use the children of Israel to destroy them. Verse six. It says, "And I will strengthen the house of Judah, and I will save the house of Joseph, and I will bring them to their plate, to bring them again to place them." For I have mercy upon them, and they shall be as though I had not cast them off. For I am the Lord their power, and will hear them. And they of Ephraim shall be like a mighty man, and the heart shall rejoice as to wine. Yea, their children shall see it and be glad. Their heart shall rejoice in the Lord. All right. And going into that spiritual power, let's go to Zechariah chapter 12. Okay. In verse uh, 8, it says, <clears throat> In that day... Shall the Lord defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem? And he that is feeble among them at that day shall be as David, and the house of David shall be as God, as the angel of the Lord before them. All right, so we're going to have spiritual power be as, be as the angels. All right, and we're going to use that against Esau, Edom, completely destroy him, put him in captivity. Let's go to Psalms chapter 72 and verse 4. Remember, we read in Isaiah 14 that he's going to break the staff of the wicked. This says uh, Isaiah chapter 72 and verse 4, it says, it's like it. Psalm chapter 72 and verse 4, it says, He shall judge the poor of the people, he shall save the children of the needy, and shall break in pieces the oppressor. All right, and who is that? Okay, the oppressor is Esau Edom, the so-called white man, and his, his descendants. All right, that is the oppressor, okay? The modern-day uh, Egyptians, the modern-day Assyrians, the modern day Babylonians, all right, spiritually, okay, they they take on the roles of those kingdoms, kingdoms as the oppressor, and the Lord said He's going to break them in pieces, 
All right, you can read about that in Isaiah 63. But let's go here first. Let's go to um, <clears throat> Jeremiah. Actually, no, it's like it. Ezekiel 35. Ezekiel 35, it says, verse 1, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face against Mount Seir and prophesy against it, and say unto it, Thus saith the Lord, Yahabashim Yahushai, Behold, O Mount Seir, I am against thee, and I will stretch out my hand against thee, and I will make thee most desolate. I will lay thy cities waste, and thou shalt be desolate, and thou shalt know that I am the Lord. Because thou hast had a perpetual hatred, and hast shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword, in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord, Yahweh I will prepare thee unto blood, and blood shall pursue thee. Sith thou hast not hated blood, even blood shall also pursue thee. Thus will I make Mount Seir most desolate, and cut off from it that passeth out, that passeth out, and him that returneth. And I will I will fill his mountains with his slain men, in thy hills and in thy valleys, and in all thy rivers shall they fall that are slain with the sword. I will make thee perpetual desolations, and thy cities shall, shall not return, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Okay? <clears throat> so that's what's, that's what's getting ready to happen, man. All right. That's what's getting ready to happen. Let's see. Mm. Okay. All right, let's go to uh, let's go to the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter two. All right, and it says it says uh, verse three, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. Yea, also because he transgresseth by wine, he is a proud man, neither keepeth at home, who enlargeth his desire as hell, and is as death. All right, he neither keepeth at home, because why? Esau even is always out in the country's business, all right, creating wars and. Uh, setting up um, uh, mock uh, false governments and stuff so they can come in and take control and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people. Shall not all these take up a parable against him and a taunting proverb against him and say, Woe to him that increaseth that which is not his. How long? And to him that ladeth himself with thick clay. All right, so all the people, so it says that, uh, that, th that we're going to take up a parable against him and a taunting proverb. All right, saying, woe to him that increaseth that which is not his. Because all he does is, like I said, he steals and pillages. He goes into different nations and sets up false governments so that he can uh, take the, the uh, take over. Okay, and so he's going to come in and say that he's bringing justice when he was the one who who uh, uh, manufactured the uh, the social upheaval in the first place, the rebellious, the rebellion in the first place. It says, verse 7, shall they not rise up suddenly that shall bite thee? And awake that shall vex thee, and thou shalt be for booties unto them. Meaning he's going to be a spoil now. Because thou hast spoiled many nations, all the remnant of the people shall spoil thee. Because of men's blood, and for the violence of the land of the city, and of all that dwell therein. It says, Woe to him that coveteth an evil covetousness to his house, that he may set his nest on high, that he may be delivered from the power of evil. Thou hast consulted shame to thy house by cutting off many people. And has sinned against thy soul. See that? So, down to verse 12. Woe to him that buildeth a town with blood, and establish a city by iniquity. All right, you know who that is. Okay? <clears throat> Let's see. All right. That's, that's all I'm going to get out of that chapter. But you see the point. Okay? You know, Esau, Edom, there. Their fate is already sealed, and they're afraid of that. There's not, but there's nothing they can do. All right, 
You know, they should have thought about that when they was doing all that evil out throughout the face of the earth. But now it's too late for them. So that, that's it. Also, I got for you guys at the moment. Lord willing, this is edifying to the elect. Wherever you may be scattered across the four winds of heaven, the four corners of the earth. All praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakwadash. Until next time, Shalom. Who shall rouse him up, turn you to the stronghold, ye prisoners of hope? Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. When I have bent Judah for me, builded the bow with Ephraim, and raised up thy sons, O Zion, against thy sons, O Greece, and made thee as the sword of a mighty man. And the Lord shall be seen over them, and his arrow shall go forth as the lightning. And the Lord God shall blow the trumpet, and shall go with whirlwinds of the south. The Lord of hosts shall defend them, and they shall devour and subdue with sling stones, and they shall drink and make a noise as through wine, and they shall be filled like bowls and as the corners of the altar. And the Lord their God shall save them that day, as the flock of his people, but they shall be as the stones of a crown, lifted up as an ensign upon his land. My anger was kindled against the shepherds, and I punished the goats. For the Lord of hosts hath visited his flock, the house of Judah, and hath made them as his goodly horse in battle. Out of him came forth the corner, out of him the nail, out of him the battle bow, out of him every oppressor together. And they shall be as mighty men which tread down their enemies in the mire of the streets in the battle. And they shall fight because the Lord is with them. Yahweh, watch him, Yahweh, watch him, Yahweh.